Well, good morning and happy Sunday, my WLCC family. Whether you are in the room or online, we are so excited to have you with us. I mean, it's going to be an incredible day, and we're going to get it started with worship. So let's stand all over the building. If you're in the room, online, stand wherever you are. The Bible says we are to put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. What that means is you got to shake off any tiredness, any weariness, shake it off. Don't buy into the lies from the enemy. You know who you are, and it's time to show the devil we're going to give God praise regardless of what we're going through. Okay, I'm preaching. We got to stop. So I want you to hunt your neighbor to the left. I want you to hunt your neighbor to the right. Tell them, let's go in. Let's worship.
your name on this morning. We give you glory, Father. Hallelujah. We bless your name. Thank you, Jesus. Our Father, all of heaven was your name. Sing louder and let this place hear out with praise. Can you hear it? The sound Oh, the sound of heaven to 
still hear it, the sound of heaven touching earth. Oh, the sound of heaven touching earth. Our Father, all of heaven, sing now, sing now. Let this place, let this place be. Go ahead and praise him in the room. He's your redeemer. Go ahead and praise him. He's your joy. Go ahead and praise him. If he's your strength, go ahead and praise him. If he's been keeping you, go ahead and praise him. If he's your healer, go ahead and praise him. No God like our God. Hallelujah. Father, we worship you in this place. You're a good God. There's nobody like you. Through the years, you've been faithful on top of faithful. You've shown us favor on top of favor. You've given us increase on top of increase. And we thank you for being a faithful God. And we declare you're not done with us yet. That you didn't bring us this far just to leave us. And so we declare that our best days are not behind us. Oh, but our best days are for us. Our eyes have not seen and neither have our ears heard. Neither have it entered into our hearts all the things, all the wonderful things you have for us. Just because you love us. We love you, Father. The Lord instructed me this morning to go ahead and release the word that he's given me for 2024. And, uh, you know, you've been here long enough. So that's not the traditional thing to do. We do it on New Year's Eve. Well, I've never been the traditional preacher. I just obey God. And so what I want to do is I want to share with you what, what, what God gave me. And if you're newer to this ministry and maybe you haven't heard things like God gave me a word or maybe even when we speak our heavenly language or the gifts of the spirit. But uh, if you haven't, that's okay. If, you, if you're here long enough, you'll learn that it's not something spooky, but it's really God. and He works in different ways. And if your pastor ever stands up and says that God gave a word, he's about to, you know, release it. The, the thing you do, man, you just you close your eyes, you listen intently, and you receive. That's what you do. You close your eyes. You don't listen for somebody, uh-huh, he need to be talking to them about that. But you listen for yourself and say, God, wherever, wherever, whatever you're doing in this season, Lord, I don't want you to do it without me. Lord, Lord I, I'm ready to go to the next level. Father, there's some things that I need you to do in my life, so I receive this word for myself. The Lord says in 2024 that it will be a year of release and plenty for those who will obey me and obey my word. He said there are some things I'm going to release you from. I'm going to release you from debt. I'm going to release you from bad relationships. I'm going to release you from shame that the enemy has tried to put on you. I'm going to release you from the enemy's attack against your body and against your health. I hear the Lord saying, you are coming out. He said, I am releasing my supernatural power and increase on you. I'm releasing my wisdom so you can get to the next level. He says, I'm bringing you to a place of contentment. I'm bringing you to a place of freedom. And I'm bringing you to a place of joy unspeakable. He says, I am bringing you to a place of plenty. Everybody say plenty. Yeah. I'm bringing you to a place of more than enough. I'm bringing you a place to where all of your needs are met over and above. I'm bringing you to a place of no lack and a place of no want. I'm bringing you to a place of no toil, says the Lord. I'm taking the struggle away. I'm, I'm taking the struggle. You've been fighting, but I'm taking the struggle away. You're winning, but I'm taking the struggle away. So increase your faith, says the Lord. Increase your time in the word, says the Lord. Increase your fellowship with me, says the Lord. And I will show you new things. Things that are only seen in the spirit realm. Put away anything that causes distractions. 
Put away anything that causes confusion. Put away anything that causes animosity between your brother or your sister. The Lord says, show grace, show love, and show compassion. He says, it's time to go deeper. It's time to get back to holiness. This world is getting darker, and it's time for you to be the light. It's time for you to walk in my authority and remind the devil that he's already defeated. So get ready, my daughter. It's time to rise up, my son. I am bringing you to a place of peace and increase that you've never experienced before. He says, follow my lead. Follow my voice and see the wonderful things I've already prepared for you, says the Lord of hosts. Father, we receive that word in the name of Jesus. Come on, just receive it. And just come on, just talk. I receive it all, Lord. I receive every bit of that word. I receive the instructions I need. I see. I, I need. I, re, I believe you're releasing me from some things. I believe that you're releasing some things into my life. I'm going deeper in you this year, Lord, next year. I'm going deeper in your word, God. I'm going deeper in my time with you. I'm laying aside every weight and sin that do so easily beset me. And I'm running with patience the race that's set before me. Because I can't speak for you, but my heart's, Lord, I just want you. Money's nice, but I want you. Stuff is nice, but Lord, I want you. And as the deer panteth after the water brook, so does my soul thirst after thee, O oh God. Lord, we need you in our lives. We can't live without you, and we've got to have you. And so, Father, I thank you that we will take this word that you've given us. As we enter into 2024, we declare a release is taking place. And we believe that we are entering into a land called plenty. We believe it. We receive it. It is so. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Can you shout unto God with the voice of triumph? Anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord at 11 o'clock in the morning? For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Amen. Well, it's good to see you in the room and online. Happy Sunday. And in the room, we're going to do what we always do, so it's time to go around and meet and greet our neighbors because we know everybody in the room's family. Isn't that right? So let's throw 60 seconds up on the clock, and let's go meet and greet. Good morning Without Limits. We are so excited to have you all with us today. This year, we are moving forward in faith. Family, here are a few updates just for you. For all of our in-person first-time friends, there is a connection card located in the seat pocket in front of you. For both our in-person and our online first-time friends, here is a QR code that will take you to our online connection card. Just simply open your camera on your smart device and tap the link. You can also connect with us by clicking the link in the caption above. Please take a moment to fill that out and submit it back to us. Kids absolutely love our church. We have an amazing kids program happening throughout the entire service. It's safe, it's secure, and most importantly, your kids are gonna have a blast. Parents, if you choose to keep your child with you in service, please be sensitive to others and take them out if they become a distraction. There is still time to check them in. Just head over to the foyer and look for the kids on hallway. FYI, forever young inside, for ages 60 and up, 
Your Christmas party is almost here. This Wednesday, December the 20th at 6.30 p.m., it is going down. There's still time to sign up, but please do so today by visiting our website so we can properly prepare. Spread the word. We're doing it back to back. Join us next Sunday, which is Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve, Sunday, December 31st, as we are coming together for one combined worship experience at 10 a.m. Come early and bring a friend. And trust me, you guys don't want to get here early. I heard pastors giving away some gifts. Prayer is the very best way to start your day. Join us for prayer every morning, Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. To join us for prayer, just dial the number 857-777-7273. Thank you for being with us today. We love you so much. Here at WLCC, we are pointing you to Christ so that you can live a better life. Enjoy the rest of the service. Well, give the Lord a big hand praise in the room. Good morning, everyone. How's everybody doing this morning? Better than ever. Can we give it up for the worship team who did an amazing job modeling worship for us? Amen. So good to see you in the house with the lights on. You look good, everybody. All right, so welcome to all of our first-time friends, whether you're in the room or online. We're so excited to have you with us. If you're in the room, in the seat pocket located in front of you, there is a connection card. If you'll take that connection card, and you can do one or two things. You can fill it out in its entirety, or you can take your camera phone. You'll notice that there's a QR code at the top. If you hold that camera phone up to it, or hold the camera up to it, there's a link, and you can fill it out that way. Either way, if you can take, uh, fill one or the other out and go to the foyer to the guest services, and they're going to give you a free gift for being our special guest. And the reason you're going to guest services and not our first time friends table is because we have holiday treats today. And so this is our second week doing it. I hope you enjoyed the holiday treats last week. And so we did it for you. Hey Amen. You can clap on that. That's okay. And we're doing it for you again. So, so make sure that you hang out, uh, you know, see your friends, but then also meet somebody you don't know. And, um, and, and I think they have hot and cold drinks. It seems like y'all like that coffee a lot. And so that must mean that they made it pretty good, praise the Lord. And so, um, so, so, so hang out. And, uh, and Lady LeConte and I, actually, that's going to change. I'll explain that to you in a second. All right. And so uh, to our friends, first-time friends online, uh, you'll also uh, see this located in the captions above and in the links below. And so if you're a first-time friend online, please fill out one of these as well. And if you want to join this amazing church, this is how you do it. You just fill out this connection card, you turn it in, and, uh, and we'll send you the information. Amen? All right. And so uh, let me see. Uh, the kids were at Bayview this past Tuesday night, and they made an incredible impact on the residents. And I saw the different pictures. There's some of them now and videos on Facebook. And to all the parents, thank you for taking the time to go and drop your children off and do that because you are never, ever closer to the will of God than when you're impacting someone's life in an amazing way. And I can't tell you how much joy those residents had because our kids went and uh, were a blessing to them. So thank you for that. And then also, amen. And then also, if you picked up an angel tree tag over the past couple weeks, they are due today. Everybody say today. And if for some reason you're like, oh, Pastor, I forgot. It's okay. We're going to be around uh, all this afternoon. Amen. And so even if you have to just let one of the leaders or staff members know, hey, I got to go shopping. We'll even meet you here if we need to. But we definitely want to get them all here today so we can start getting the unwrapped gifts to the parents. Uh, so that way every WLCC kid is going to have an amazing Christmas. Amen. And that's a good place to clap too. Amen. Let me see. Just one more thing to talk about before our offering. I want to go ahead and give you the dates for our fast. Uh, our fast is going to be uh, starting in January, the 1st through the 5th. It's going to start the 1st at 12 noon. It's going to go to the 5th at 12 noon. And uh, so, so in, 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 you know, our church fasts a couple times a year, and we consecrate a couple times a year together. It is my prayer that you, you know, consecrate and fast on your own. Uh, and when you do that, uh, you can do it however you'd like to. Some of us have been saved a long time, and we, we'll take these days and say, hey, Pastor, I'm not going to do anything but just, you know, water. And that's good. The reason I do it the way I do it is even if you came last week and just got saved, you're able to do this. And so if you want to go fast, you go by yourself. If you want to go far, you go together. And so, of course, if you want to, uh, to you know, if you say, hey, Pastor, I'm, not, I'm just going to do straight water, that's fine. But just so you know, that is the reason that we do what we do. And so for the fast, everybody say, no news. None at all, okay, y'all? None at all. So delete them apps off your phone or whatever. Uh, no social media. 
uh, and then what we are going to have is fruits, vegetables, and meat, all right? So just fruits, veggies, and meats, and then uh, let's stick with water only. Uh, some of you in the morning, you know, you just need your coffee or your tea. Regular coffee and tea is acceptable, but listen, y'all, coffee is not frappuccinos with all the, uh, what's the stuff they put on top? Yeah, all the uh, whipped cream and that kind of stuff. You know, we ain't fasting if you at Starbucks getting frappuccinos, right? But, you know, just regular coffee or regular hot tea in the morning, that's, that's definitely appropriate. You know, some of us need a little bit of caffeine to kind of get us going. But let's, uh, so let's stay away from all the sugary drinks, no sodas and sweet teas and things like that. And then I also just want you to pray about your seed for our big giving day. Our big giving day, uh, you might say, well, Pastor, that's not till the first Sunday in March, which is March 3rd. But do you know that it's only 10 weeks away? And so, um, so anyways, uh, I just want you to pray about that. Uh, pray and prepare. Everybody say pray, pray and prepare. All right. I think that's everything. Somebody says opportunity time. That just means that it's time to receive of our tithes and of our offerings here at Without Limits. We say that giving is not what? That's right. Giving is not a game, but it is God's plan to prosper our lives. And to the degree that we do it on purpose, out of principle, we'll see amazing things happen in our lives. When we give, it's a way that we honor God, and it's a way that we worship God. There are several ways to give. Uh, if you look in the uh, seat pack pockets in front of you, uh, you'll see offering envelopes, and you can use those. Uh, you can also use Cash App or Cash Tag. Please make sure that you pay attention to that properly. It is WLCCNB. The NB simply stands for New Berm. And so make sure uh, if you're going to give that way that you give uh, to that cash tag. Um, Secure Give is our absolute favorite way to give. So if you're newer to our ministry and you give uh, and you have not done it, or maybe you've been a member a long time and you just haven't used Secure Give, I ask you to go uh, download it on your app store, your play store. It takes about five minutes to set up. After that, it literally takes a minute to give. And so if you could give that way, uh, that's one of our favorite ways to give. No matter how you give, know that you're sowing good seed into good ground and it's going to produce a harvest in your life. Amen. And so we're about to give, but before we do this, I, I don't want to forget. And so um, after service, and I, I normally love to stay and hang out and, um, and, and fellowship with you. And if you know Pastor and Lady, we do that every single week, right? And so uh, to, I did it at the 9 o'clock, but at the 11, Lady will be down here. And so as soon as I get done uh, teaching, I'm going to go into dad mode because I promised Hannah that once she was done with her semester, that I would take her up north to see her Mimi and Pop Pop. So as soon as I get done teaching, uh, we're going to head out and go that way. But we got to be back Wednesday night because Jay flies in Thursday morning. So we got a lot going on, amen. And so... Uh, and so anyways, uh, that's why you won't see me down below, all right? And so, uh, uh, so anyways, and then I need two extra minutes on my lesson today. Is that okay? Y'all give me two extra minutes on my lesson. I think I can do it in two extra minutes. So, all right, I think that's everything I didn't want to forget. So now uh, I want you to enjoy the holiday music, and then at this time, let's receive our offering. holiday songs this Christmas. We're caroling through what? And this Christmas will be very special. For who? Ah! 
Give the Lord a big hand praise. Talk to your neighbor. Right. Give the Lord a big hand praise. Thank you for your giving in the room and online. If we missed your tither offering envelope, if you hold it up real high, we'll be glad to serve you. Okay, we did good. How is faith released? By the words of our mouth. That's right. Faith is released by the words of our mouth. Nothing moves until we speak, and it's part of the process of faith that we call those things that be not as though they were. Understanding that if we keep saying what the word says and keep saying what the word says, that we will see the word manifest in our lives. So this is a declaration of faith that we make together as a family. There it is on the screen. Are you all ready to do it? All right, let's go. I am giving today because I believe this is God's way to prosper my life. I consistently give 10% of my income as a tithe because I'm in covenant with God. Malachi 3 says the tithe unties the hands of God, opens the heavens, and stops the plans. You say it real loud. Great job. I give offerings over and above my tithe, and this releases my overflow. I align myself with 2 Corinthians 9, and I declare uncommon, unusual, and unexplainable favor in my life. These seeds I plant today break the back of lack. I place demands on my seeds according to the word of God and command them to produce a hundredfold return. These are my confessions of faith concerning my seed, and I declare that I'm living, come on, my best life now in Jesus' name. If you believe it, put your hands together and give the Lord a big praise. Amen. You might be seated in the presence of the Lord. All right. So uh, we're going to grab our Bibles. Um, I taught a lesson last week entitled Keys to Victorious Living. Didn't think it was going to be a series, and so I still don't think it's going to be a series, but I am going to give you part two today, amen? And so I'm excited about it. So let's pray, and, uh, and let's move into the lesson. So Father, even now, I ask you to just breathe on this lesson that your people might be encouraged. I decrease that you, the greater one, might increase. Think through my mind. Speak through my lips as I declare your word. I thank you for the compassion of Jesus that always flows from my heart. We give you praise in advance for confirming your word in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said? Amen. All right, we'll make our confession of faith. They'll put it up on the screen. If you have a Bible, you can hold it up. There it is. Are you all ready to do it? All right, here we go. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I can have what it says I can have. Today, I will be taught the word of faith. I boldly confess that my mind is alert, my heart is receptive, and I will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so we're uh, in a, uh, maybe you call a mini-series entitled Keys to Victorious Living. Keys to Victorious Living. And I already told you last week that the key ingredient is having a relationship with Jesus. That is the springboard for everything in our lives. Jesus came that we may have life and live it victoriously. To the degree that we are willing to accept Jesus into our hearts and live faithfully for him, we will see our lives get better and better. Um, John 10 and 10, they'll put it up on the screen. Uh, when, some, when, when we look at the Bible and it's written in red, what does that mean? Jesus is talking. So Jesus says, the thief come of not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. He says, I am come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. In the Amplified, it says to the full till it overflows. So you have to understand that Jesus came, he died, and he shed his blood so you could live a victorious life. It is not God's will for you to live a defeated life. It is God's will for you to live a victorious life. And you can only do it to the degree that you just don't make him savior, but you make him Lord of your life. Right. And so it's submitting your will for his will It's submitting your way for his way. Right. Uh, Luke, the fourth chapter and the 16th verse. I want to jump right into it. And uh, we're going to just keep talking about Jesus. I, I, after all, he is the reason for the season. Isn't that right? But how many know that we just don't celebrate Jesus, Jesus during this season? We celebrate Jesus every single day of our lives. Right. So you can celebrate Christmas in August. 
You can celebrate Easter in December because it's all about Jesus. Amen. Luke, the fourth chapter and the 16th verse, it says, And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him throughout, through all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. Verse 16. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, as his custom was. He went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. So as his custom, Jesus went to church. It should be our custom that we go to church. Amen. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah, or Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. And, and Jesus says, the, well, well, he's reading, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he have anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. The Bible says that after that, he, the, he then closes the book, right? And everybody's looking at Jesus. And then Jesus looks at them and says, this day is that scripture fulfilled in your ears. And they were like, man, this dude is crazy, right? And, and you would think, well, uh, you know, it, it went pretty well, his, his, well, his sermon, uh, because the Bible says later that they led him unto a hill and tried to push him off. I think it didn't go over well because he basically said, this is who I really am. That, that, yeah, I'm not just a carpenter, but I am the son of God, and this is what I've come to do. I have come to fulfill that scripture. And he was already doing it. And, and I want to remind everyone in the room who all believe in Jesus, and I pray you do, and if not, we're going to give you opportunity at the end. But I want to remind every person in this room and online that Jesus can never change. All right. The Bible says he's immutable. Immutable means that he can never change. He can't change because if he could change, that means he could get better and he can't get better because he's perfect. Does that make sense? So if he can't change, that means if he did these things back then, he still does them now. So not only was he a healer, but he still is a healer. Not only was he a protector, but he still is a protector. Not only was he a deliverer, but he still is a deliverer. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. I want to talk to you about those five things that he read from the book of Isaiah the prophet and, and that we can see that are available to us today. I made the comment last week that one of the epidemics we have in the body of Christ is that we make him savior. Watch this now. But we don't make him Lord. We stop at salvation. Yeah, I'm going to get saved because I don't want to go to hell. All right? Yeah, but, but what happens is if you just get saved so that he's in my heart, uh, you know, eternal life's there, but I don't go any further, right? Then you're going to live a defeated life. Does that make sense? You have to learn to warfare. You have to learn to worship. You have to learn the word. Does that make sense? And so I want to show you five things that are available to us through Jesus based on what he read. All right. And so we're ready to dive in. Are you guys ready to do it? All right. Everybody say number one. Number one, salvation. And, 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 and even though I say we shouldn't just stop there, it's important that I explain it. So Jesus came to preach that I came to preach the gospel to the poor. The gospel is good news. And the good news is God sent his only son, Jesus, who was the perfect sacrifice, who knew no sin. He became sin for you and I. He paid the sin debt, allowing us to have a relationship with the Father. Watch this, live a victorious life here on this earth. And then when we close our eyes here on earth, we're going to spend eternity in heaven with the Father. You got it? And, 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 and so, so, so watch this. And, it, 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 everybody say and. and. It, it gets better. The gospel is the good news that Jesus, the anointed one and his anointing, came to remove our burdens and destroy our yokes by the power of God. And you don't have a problem that God can't solve. You don't have a situation he can't fix. You don't have a sickness that he's not already healed. See, Jesus has taken care of all of that in the finished work of Calvary. And if we will just confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. Does that make sense? 
Christianity is different from every other religion in the world. You got to well, pastor, Christianity isn't exactly a religion. I know the theological part. I'm just trying to give a, you know, a basis before people who understand where I'm talking, what I'm talking about, but I feel you, all right? Christianity is different from every other religion in the world. That's because it's the only religion where you can go to heaven and you don't have to work for it. The writer says, for by grace are you saved through faith. It is the gift of God and not of works, lest any man should boast, right? So you don't have to do the work. You just have to do the receiving. Does that make sense? And once you receive him, you got to live for him. Does that make sense? But how many know Jesus has already done all the work? You got it? It is by grace are you saved through faith. And the thing I love about grace is you can't do anything good enough to deserve it, but you can't do anything bad enough to get rid of it. That's what makes it grace. And, 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 and the primary focus of Jesus' ministry was to get people saved. He came to seek and save that which was lost. And we, as a spirit-filled church, how many know that we can never lose the focus of evangelism and telling people about Jesus? We can never lose the focus of inviting people to church. We can never lose the focus of telling people our story, how God did it for us, and the same God that did it for me can do it for you. Does that make sense? See, the church is to be like a swimming pool. You got it? A swimming pool? Have you ever been to the swimming pool? You got it. Uh, you know, to the swimming pool with Pookie and them just hanging out on a Saturday. You got it. And, 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 you know, when you go to the swimming pool, if you notice, you got all types of people that come to the swimming pool. And that's what I love about Without Limits. We, red and yellow, black and white, we're all precious in his sight. Some of us come from Church of God in Christ in the apostolic way. And some of us say, no, that was a little too much for me. You got it? I come from the Presbyterian side. You understand? And then some say, I came from AME. We came marching in. You understand what I'm saying? Like, we come from different uh, walks. And that's kind of how the swimming pool was. Because when you went to the swimming pool, some, you know, some of the guys would take their shirts off and they'd run and do a cannonball right into the deep. You got it. While you had others say, no, man, I ain't going to that deep water. I'm going this little two feet, three feet. I'm going to wade in the water. Yeah, I'm going to be right here. And then you have some say, no, I don't fool with water. You understand? And water don't fool with me. I may sit on the side and put my feet in, but that is as far as I'm going. And you have to understand that the church is to be like that. We are not supposed to be so suchy much and so sophisticated that nobody can walk in and get the word. And pastor is going to teach the word in a simplistic manner where if you are in the deep, I got something for you. If you in two feet, I got something for you. If you just trying to put your feet in, you're going to get something out of the lesson that I'm teaching you. Does that make sense? And so you have to understand the importance of telling people about Jesus. I showed you that graphic a few weeks ago that ultimately people bring people. And you have to look at it as your responsibility to bring. I can't make you do it. I can't force you to do it. So it's my prayer that the Holy Spirit puts it in your heart that I've got to tell people about Jesus. I've got to invite people to my church. Because how many in the room, after having come to this church, you are living a better life? You got it? Well, watch, watch this now. Then you don't want to withhold from somebody else because if you invite them, their life's going to change like your life changed. Does that make sense? Y'all get anything out of this? All right. All right. So that was number one. Everybody say number two. Number two is healing. He says that he came to open the blind eyes. Uh, one of my, uh, as a kid growing up, uh, my, my, my father, uh, you know, um, just a mighty man of God. And as a kid, I saw so many healings and miracles and just breakthroughs and deliverances and, and that anointing. Uh, and those gifts were just on my father's life. I thank God that some of those have fell on me and I don't take that for granted. Uh, but as a little boy, uh, my father loved Acts 10 and 38 and he always preached about Jesus. He was just a Jesus preacher and that's what it's all about, right? Uh, Acts 10 and 38 says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing what class? Good. Come on, doing what? Good. So Jesus went about doing good. I submit to you that we're supposed to go about doing good, right? And I says, and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. And when we begin, first of all, I talked to you a little bit last week that, 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 by his stripes, we are already healed, right? We went to, you can go to Isaiah, you can go to, you know, you can go to, a, you can go to Peter, you can go to a lot of, I could take you to a lot of different places, um, but we know we are healed uh, and we have to walk in that healing. Some sickness, the Holy Spirit was showing me, is a direct result 
um, simply oppression from the enemy. Sometimes the enemy will try to oppress you and put something on you and then make you think that you did something wrong to get it. You got it? And so you have to understand that some sickness is a direct result of oppression from the enemy, but Jesus took 39 stripes, and because of those stripes, you're not going to be healed. You are already healed. So you have to receive it by faith, and you have to start walking in it. That is why pastor teaches you the word of faith. My pastor, Pastor Taylor, taught me years ago, I can give you a fish and feed you a meal, or I can teach you how to fish and feed you a lifetime. And my whole thing is, if I teach you the word of faith, it's going to work no matter where you go. You got it? As a pastor, I'd love for everybody to always stay here and never get orders to someplace else for my military people or, you know, people relocate. I understand life just don't work like that. But the great thing is, even if you have to leave this ministry, you can take the word of faith with you. And the same word of faith that works in New Bern, North Carolina is the same word of faith that will work anywhere on this absolute continent because it's the word of God. Does that make sense? And so, and, and, and that's why I teach you faith. That's why I teach you that, you know, death and life is in the power of the tongue. And they that love it eat the fruit thereof, that you have to watch what you say. Because most people have not made a connection between what they say and what they have in their lives. You can't, like, if I, if, if I see you, don't come talk to me, yeah, Pastor, I'm sick. I'm, I'm going to say the devil is a lie. No, you know, well, you know what I mean. No, I know what you said, and the devil knows what you said, right? No, I am the healed resisting sickness and disease, right? Because Jesus has already taken care of it on Calvary, and by faith I receive ultimately and totally my healing, and I keep confessing the word of faith over my life. I keep confessing the word of healing over my life because I am already healed, right? I'm now just waiting for my body to get the revelation of it so I can have full man manifestation of what's going on, but I'm already healed. So even though if there's a little bit of pain in my body, an ailment, a report from the doctor, a faith never denies the facts, but it looks, watch this, it overlooks it based on truth. The truth is the truth of God's word. John 17 and 17 says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. And so the truth is you are not sick, but you're healed. You're not poor, but you're rich. You're not defeated, but you have the victory. You're not alone, but you have a friend. The truth truth is you can do all things through Christ that strengthen you. The truth is you are more than a conqueror who them that love you. And I can keep giving you truth and truth and truth because it's all in the word of God. And you take that truth with you wherever you go. Does that make sense? Amen. And so, and as much as pastor is accessible, I will meet with you anytime, talk to you anytime. We've got staff and leaders and, you know, but, but the truth of the word is, man, sometimes you get a hold of this and you love your pastor, but I don't need to call pastor and pray for me because I already know Jesus bore my sickness and infirmity on a tree. You got it? We talked to one of our members who came through, uh, uh, came down the line at the nine o'clock and she, uh, you know, said that she was in a hell challenge. She thought, I knew what to do. She said, I went and got the packet. You know, I put the oil on me. I had the prayer cloth. I started reading the confessions. I flipped it over. I said the scriptures. I'm back and I'm healed. Why? Because the word works if you work the word. All right. And so five things we can that, that are available to us through Jesus. Number one was salvation. Number two was healing. And then number three, this is very, very important. But sometimes if we're not careful, even as the church, we look away from this. But Jesus also came that we might have inner healing. Everybody say inner healing. Inner healing. Jesus came to heal the brokenhearted. All right? He came to heal the brokenhearted. Uh, uh, so, so Jesus came not only to heal us physically, but he came to heal us emotionally, all right? Uh, it, it is not God's will for us uh, uh, to have, uh, let me just say in, 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 in a, just, a, 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 just a, a normal way, it, it's not God's will for you to be depressed. It's not God's will for you to be oppressed. It is not God's will for you um, um, to, to be dealing with things emotionally uh, where you're hurt and you can't get over it. And it doesn't mean what happened uh, wasn't right, but what it means is that God can heal you from it. Does that make sense? You got it. Uh, and we live in a day and time where, you know, in this culture, you hear them talk a little bit more about mental health, right? Uh, but then I've seen, uh, you know, a lot of churches and preachers just push that, push that. And, you know, and honestly, as, as a younger preacher, because I still think I'm a young preacher, right? I'm praying like, okay, Lord, like, you know, where do I go with this? Because I'm, I'm hearing people that I look up to say, I don't believe in therapists and I don't believe in, and I'm like, I, I, you know, I, w- I was in the mental health system for years and I kind of do, you know? And he told me, he said, son, 
He said, do you not know that trauma was in the Bible from the beginning? One brother killed another brother. He, he said, look at the trauma that was in, the fa in, in that family. You got it? And, and so he said, no, no, you have to talk about those things. And, 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 and so ultimately, you know, I believe time helps. You got it. But Holy Spirit heals. But I also believe, I've given you my definition on wisdom for years, that is taking the natural and the spiritual together, you got it, to bring forth the perfect will of God for our lives. I, 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 I know Christian therapists. I believe in it. I believe in counseling. I believe sometimes you need to talk to somebody. Sometimes talking to somebody is a way of releasing things, you got it, instead of keeping everything in all the time. No, the therapist is not going to heal you, but it helps. Does that make sense? And you have to understand that. But sometimes we're so spiritually minded that we're no earthly good. And imagine me as your pastor telling you, I don't believe in that. And I don't believe in that. And now because you look up to me, you know, you're, you're, you're shying away from something that could help you. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I look at therapy like I look at as an a antibiotic. I know Jesus is a healer, but if I have an infection and the doctor wants to give me an antibiotic, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to take the antibiotic because it's going to help heal me. Does that make sense? And so, so, so we shy away from this and we shy away from mental health, but Jesus didn't come just to heal our physical bodies. He came to heal our mind and he came to heal our emotions, all right? And, and, and if you, watch this, if you need to be healed uh, emotionally, watch this, and you shy away from it and you don't get healed emotionally, it will affect what you do on this earth and how you relate to others emotionally. If you never get healed, let me tell you what the devil wants. He wants those of us that, are, that, that need to be healed in those areas to not get healed in those areas because he wants you to live a roller coaster life. He wants you to be up here, then down here. Then, and, then, and, and then what happens is those that love you and are around you, they're not really sure what to expect. They love you. They ain't going to change their mind, but they don't know what to expect. And then you, 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 you'll get frustrated with yourself because I don't want to be like that. Not understanding that you need to put some things in place to get the help you need. You got it. And ultimately, you need to start praying. You need to start confessing. You need to get a prayer war with you. Come on, somebody. You put the natural and the spiritual together because you are not going to overcome it. You are already overcoming it in Jesus' name. Amen. That's a good place to clap right there. And y'all all missed it. Now, 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 as much as I believe in uh, therapy and psychologists and those kind of things, and, you know, for years I had to deal with them for uh, some of the things that we did in the mental health field, there's one word that was always difficult for me, one word that, was, that they used that was always difficult for me, and I understand where they're coming from, so I'm not knocking them because I believe in it, but, but they all, would always tell, you know, uh, our kids, they would tell them, that not my, but we had group homes for kids for years, all right, and, and, and we would take them to therapy once a week and those kind of things, uh, so I didn't want you to think I was talking about Jay and Hannah, they would always tell them, well, I can give you something to help you cope. And that always bothered me because, you know, I can show you how to cope with it. And I get it, and that's helpful, but at some point we have to understand that Jesus doesn't just want us to cope. He wants to set us free. And that's the key, that Jesus wants to set you free. Jesus came to set you free. He came to set you free from hurt. He came to set you free from anger. He came to set you free from, uh, from resentment. He came to set you free from insecurities. He came to set you free from addictions. He came to set you free from strongholds. He came to set you free from fears. He came to set you free from bad things that happened from you. So no matter what it is or no matter what it was, and I'm not denying it, and I'm not trying to make it small because it's real, and you need to get the natural help you need and the spiritual help you need, but I'm here to tell you in the name of Jesus that we're declaring that you are already free. John 8 and 36 says, if the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. So, and, and let me just, let, before I go to my next point, never knock somebody, you know, if, you know, if, if they, if, yeah, let me, yeah, let me just go that route. Never knock somebody if they're honest with you and tell you how they're feeling. Did you ever think that maybe they came to you because they trusted you? You got it. You know, and, and then let me go a little bit further, because sometimes we'll accept it if it's a woman. Right. But if it's a man, oh, you just you need you're just so weak. No, maybe they maybe they're going through something. Does that make sense? And so you have to make sure that if somebody comes to you, the first thing you have to do, you got it, is uh, the, the Bible talks about the eyes of your understanding. You got it. Being enlightened. So you have to listen to them through the lenses of eternity. You got it. You got, you got to hear you, what they're saying and allow the Holy Spirit to help you respond to them and telling them you just need to go take a nap. 
Praise the Lord. All right, all right, all right, okay. You know, all right, in the back, in the back, let's put up point number one. All right, class, what's point number one? All right, salvation was made for us. You got it. Jonah says salvation is of the Lord. I said, I know that's right. All right, let's put up point number two. Class, what is point number two? Healing. Healing. All right, let's put up number three. Class, what is point number three? Inner Inner healing. All right, and now let's put up number four. What is it, class? He came to preach deliverance to the captive. And so deliverance belongs to you and deliverance belongs to me for whatever it is that you need to be delivered from. All right. And, and, and there are people that don't understand spiritual warfare and, 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 and demons and those kind of things. There are literally people I've heard people preach that the demons are in third world countries. No, they here. They here. They most definitely here. All right. Uh, I think they may be a little bit more sophisticated. You got it. Uh, but, 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 but when you begin to understand that there are, now you don't have to attach yourself to any of this. I'm just giving you information, okay? But there are spirits of unforgiveness and spirits of bitterness and spirits of resentment and anger and, and, and hate and envy and jealousy. Uh, uh, spirits of pride. Spirit of pride holds a lot of Christians back. You got it. A, a lot of Christians, that spirit of pride. Uh, uh, then there, there's, uh, uh, you know, lying spirits. You got it. You know anybody lying? No, don't answer that question. You, uh, you lying. No, but anyways, uh, 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 you know, spirit, lust spirits. And these are all spirits that can control people in these areas. And, 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 and sometimes people want to do what's right. You got it. Uh, but they feel that they can't do what's right. Paul said another mem- member wars against the law of my mind. You got it. And, and, and he said, when I would do good. Good, evil is always present. You got it? Uh, uh, and, and so what happens is people want to break free and they think they can't break free because the reason is they're trying to do it on their own. You can never break free on your own, but you can break free with Jesus. There is something about the name of Jesus and there's something about the blood of Jesus that breaks everything that's not like God. Because the blood still works and the blood still, watch this, the blood still has power. There's still power in the name of Jesus. That is why when something happens, right, or, or even when someone comes to me and I say, hey, how you doing? Pastor, I'm sick. I say, the devil is a lie. You are not sick. You are to heal resistant sickness and disease in the name of Jesus. Right? So we're going to say what the word says because Jesus is the answer. And so Jesus can deliver you from any addiction. He can deliver you from any stronghold. He can deliver you from anything that's not like God, right? But I heard, heard this old mother say years ago, he'll del- he can deliver you if you want to be delivered. And that's the key. You have to want to be delivered, all right? And, 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 and so you have to know that Jesus is the answer. And watch this. And, 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 and you have to know that you're not going to be free, but you're already free. Come on, let's, let's, just, let's just do this together. Just repeat it. Say, I, I, am free. I am free. Right now, right now I, I am, am free. 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 free from sickness, from, sickness. from, disease, from disease, from depression, from, depression. from poverty, from lack, from insecurities, from addictions, from strongholds, from everything. I am free. I believe it. I receive it. It is so right now in Jesus' name. Now clap your hands and give God praise. So on my faith process, and I got to move, I got to move, but on my faith process, watch this, if we look at freedom, watch this, or we look at victory as being that keyboard, if we're not careful, the enemy wants to make us think that every day I'm walking to my freedom or I'm walking to my victory. But you're not walking to your freedom or you're not walking to your victory because Jesus is on the inside of you. And when you receive Jesus, you receive freedom, you receive victory, you receive joy. So I'm never walking to it. I'm walking in it. I'm walking in my freedom. I'm walking in my victory. I'm walking in everything that God has already done for me. You got it. You know, but your spouse said, yeah, but you was acting crazy last night. Yeah, I might have been acting, but I'm free. Come on, somebody. I acted crazy last night, but I ain't going to act crazy tonight. And I ain't going to act crazy tomorrow night. And I ain't going to. So then you get three days under your belt, and then you act crazy on the fourth night. But just thank God I got three days under my belt. Next time it's going to be four. Come on, somebody. 
and you keep working that process. You got it? To the degree you look back and say, man, I ain't, I ain't acted crazy in months. <laughs> because whom the son has made free, he's free indeed. This young preacher is preaching up in here this morning whether you realize it or not. All right, my last one, number five, the thing that was available to us through Jesus is baptism in the Holy Spirit. Now, I, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm going to teach probably in the first quarter on the Holy Spirit. I'm not going to have a long time. i got three minutes and 30 seconds left. But let me give you a quick breakdown and understanding. The Bible teaches us that there are three baptisms, okay? There's the baptism of salvation, all right? Uh, uh, that's when we get saved, all right? Uh, the Holy Spirit does this. And then there's water baptism. Uh, the church does this. And then there's baptism in the Holy Spirit. And this is as, as a result of Jesus and what took place on Calvary and, and Acts and the day of Pentecost and those things, all right? The only baptism required to get to heaven is the baptism of salvation, all right? However, you got it, it's a good idea to experience the other baptisms, but it is not required, all right? So, 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 so Jesus says to set at liberty them that are bruised. This literally means to free them from the pressure of life and give them comfort. When I looked it up, it literally means when Jesus said that, and I did a lot of word searches just to make sure one theologian wasn't all, but they all say the same thing. It literally means to free them from the pressures of life and give them comfort. That sounds like the Holy Spirit to me, all right? And so, mo and, and so most people preach that the last thing that Jesus said before he left was go. That's actually not the last thing he, he, he preached. He said the last thing he actually told them was to stay, to stay until you're empowered and then go. Watch this. I'll show it to you in Acts 1 because you know if I I'm going to tell you anything, I'm going to back it up with the scripture, right? Acts 1 and 4. Here we go. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized you with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And Jesus said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. He says, But ye shall receive power. Everybody say after. after. And this is why we need the Holy Ghost. After the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and in the uttermost parts of the earth. And when he, Jesus, had spoken these things, while they, while they beheld, or they were looking at him, he was taken up, in, and a cloud received him right out of their sight. That was Acts 1 and 4. Just go, just go next door to Acts 2. You know, it's, it's all one big letter, but they just break it down in and, 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 and the chapters and those kind of things. Verse, verse, uh, chapter 2, verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, this is what Jesus was telling them about the promise of my Father, Holy Spirit. It, they were all in one accord, in one place. Sounds like they were obedient because Jesus told them to stay, right? And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting, and there appeared unto them clothing tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all Field, same word as baptized. You can look it up with the Holy Ghost and begin to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. All right? Well, and, and, and let, me, let me just help you. Salvation is of the Lord. Salvation is its own baptismal experience, and you have to be saved to get to heaven. There's no other name under heaven where, but whereby men shall be saved but the name of Jesus. Is that that name? Every knee's going to bow. Every tongue's going to confess, right, that he's Lord to the glory of the Father. Water baptism, if you get saved and don't ever get water baptism, you're still going to make it to heaven. If you get saved, right, and you don't, you know, you don't uh, uh, never experience the gift uh, of, of being baptized in the Holy Spirit with that heaven the language, you still going to make it to heaven, right? But what you don't want to do is speak against it. Because watch this. <laughs> if you feel it's not for you, no problem. See, I teach the word across the board like I teach anything. When I teach you on giving, do I force you to give? No, absolutely not. So just when I teach you, when I teach on Holy Spirit in the first quarter, I'm not going to force it. No, I'm going to give you information and I'm going to give you revelation and that's enough for you to make a decision 
right? Well, well, but what you don't want to do is preach against it. I know preachers personally. You know, some of them I'm, I'm acquaintances, acquaintances with, and I, and I do believe that they love the Lord. I really do. But what happens is, you know, they would tell me, what well, Holy Spirit's not for today, and I ain't going to do that, that booba 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 stuff. And You know, I mean, the guy's talking about me, you know, in town, asked me to go to lunch. I was like, yeah, I'll go to lunch with you. And so when he did that, it didn't offend me. I said, oh, no problem. I said, well, kid, you know, I got, my Bi- I got my Bible with me. How you got your Bible? On oh, my phone, my Bible app, you know. And I said, well, can we just go to the Scripture? Oh, I ain't going to the Scripture. I ain't going to the Scripture. And that's the problem because people tell us it's not for today, and we're just supposed to believe it. That is why anything pastor ever told you, you can go to the Scripture and verify that it is there. Does that make sense? So let me just show you that Holy Spirit is for today, and after that, we're going to have to wrap it up. I'm all the way out of time, y'all. I'm just telling you. So y'all just give me like two or three minutes, and then me and Hannah Banana, we got to hit the road and go see Mimi and Pop Pop, all right? So Acts 2 and 37, but I can't leave you hanging. You got to know this. When, when I teach on Holy Spirit, I will teach at least three Sundays on it, and I will break it down. When you get done, you are going to understand the full ministry of the Holy Spirit, all right? Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? They heard the word. It pricked their heart. Peter said, man, you, number one, you got to get saved. First baptism, right? He said, and then you need to be baptized. That's water baptism. You got it. And he said, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's the third baptism. Verse 39, for the promise is unto you and to your children Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, whoa, let's start off. We're reading it too fast. I thought it wasn't for today. Verse 39, for the promise is unto you and your and to all that are, even as many as the Lord our God, it seems like that's la di da everybody, Right? Right. Okay. All right. Well, well, yeah, but that was Peter. You know, and Peter, he probably wasn't around Jesus at the right time. You know, Peter be messing up stuff. Yeah. After all, he did cuss. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. Let's go back to the red because the red means Jesus was talking. John 14 and 16. This is Jesus. And I will pray the Father, or more to the Father. And that's what I love about KJV. All right. I will pray the Father, and he shall give you what class? another comforter that he may abide with you so that this the bible says that all scripture is given by inspiration of god and it is profitable so the bible teaches that the word profits us and he goes on to say for 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 reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness and those kind of things well reproof is a dismantling of erroneous thinking it is erroneous to think that holy spirit is not for today when we see it in scripture I don't have time to take you to the law first mention where I actually I kind of did and, 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 and then show you if I take you here and I take you here and I take you here, you know, you're going, you know, I, 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 that stuff really does a lot for me. But the Lord told me always teach the word in a simplistic manner. You understand? I talk about the law first mention. Ninety percent of y'all going to be like, Pastor, you done lost me. And that's not the goal. The goal is when you walk out of here, my pastor showed me through the scripture that the Holy Spirit is for today. And if I want him, all I have to do is receive him. Does that make sense? All right. Oh, man. Ah, we got to go home, Maestro. We got to go home. All right. Uh, uh, Everybody say, if you had time. All right. If you had time. If you had had time. Preacher man would would explain to you what this heavenly language is, how it um, causes you to your spirit to pray directly to the Father, and that you pray the perfect will of God for your life. If preacher man had time, he would take you to Romans 8 and 26 uh, that, that, that teaches us that the spirit helps our infirmity, for we, we, we know not what we should pray as we ought. It didn't say we don't know how to pray. It says sometimes we don't know what to pray, and there's a difference, right? But he says, but the Holy Spirit uh, himself maketh intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. For he that searches the heart knoweth what is the mind of the spirit because watch this he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God so when I pray I'm praying the perfect will of God for my life so watch this when I pray this heavenly language you heard me praying a little bit earlier today I think during ministry moment so so when I pray the perfect will of God I'm sorry when I use or when I yeah when I pray my heavenly prayer language slow down preacher I pray the perfect will of God for my life I edify and build up myself Watch this class. When we pray in our English, in English, our thoughts, prejudices, even fears can intervene because we organize our prayer. Or, or Holy Spirit can prompt, or, 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 or you can be praying for people, right? And you got a list. 
that you always pray for. You got, and you, maybe you haven't prayed that list in, you know, maybe two, three weeks. Somebody on that list has done you wrong since the last time you prayed. And now you pray and you hit that up. I ain't praying. You done got all out the spirit. But when you pray, watch this, the perfect will of God for your, for your life and the perfect will of God for others when you're praying the prayer of intercession and you're praying that, whole, it doesn't matter. You're not organizing anything. You are just praying the perfect. You know, I don't know what you're saying. Yeah, but God does. And that's why I'm not, I don't have a whole, you know, a, 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 you know, our pastor doesn't, you know, do it for 45 minutes at a time because it, the Bible says it actually doesn't edify you, it edifies me. Does that make sense? All right. Oh, man, I, I, I need to have a little bit of extra time to really explain some of the gifts. I, you, you all know them to a degree, and I've taught you along the way, but it's tough because we're always getting new people, and I want to make sure everyone's at the same place. Pentecost, the day of Pentecost, was the empowerment to walk righteously on this earth. Jesus came to make us righteous and in right standing with God. Holy Spirit came to empower us to live righteously. When the law was given, they couldn't keep it. They had no power to keep it. So Holy Spirit empowers us to live righteous in an unrighteous generation. So it's going to be almost impossible to live righteous without the power of the Holy Spirit. Because when you receive the Holy Spirit, boldness shows up. There are a lot of believers that they love the Lord, but they fall at temptation. Why? Because they, have, they have, because they have need of the next step while living on this earth to receive the Holy Spirit and that gift so they can live an empowered life. Ephesians 5 and 18 says, do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. You know what debauchery is? That's a life that's out of control. You know, that's the life that's out. Of, so, you know, you know, you know, I know people want to go back and forth about drinking and, and you know, and, you know. what well, the Lord said, the Bible said we could drink wine. You got it. He didn't say you could drink that hard liquor. That mad dog 2020. <laughs> Actually, the Bible, I, I, I just had to recently do a research on this because I just haven't followed a lot because I never drank. So I just didn't think anything about it. And actually, the Bible, actually, there's different places where it speaks against drinking. You got it. And, 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 and so, you know, but I, I mean, uh, you know, strongest drink I drink is, and I don't drink it much. You got it. But the strongest drink I do drink, I mean, just being full transparent, is a Diet Mountain Dew. <laughs> yeah, just, just full transparency. You got it. You know, I just, you know, and I don't drink that much. You got, I drink water most of the time, right? And so the lady and I, I'm going to just go ahead and tell you, I've been trying to eat right. And then, you know, the lady's like, you know, I ain't going to put it on lady. We went to Smithfield's Chicken and Barbecue yesterday. <laughs> huh? Okay. And so, uh, no, it's my job to cover you, baby. And so, uh, so I think I said, I, I said, man, I'm going to get me. I was like, do they have Diet Mountain Dew? She said, yeah, I think they do. And I ordered me a Diet Mountain Dew. They gave me a Diet Pepsi. And you, you talking about strong drink? Oh, Lord. I tell, oh, oh, Lord, Jesus. I know y'all be laughing at me, but you got to thank God you got a real man of God who's saved, who's living for Jesus. Come on, somebody. You got to appreciate you got a real man of God. I don't know all that stuff they be doing out in the school. I don't even care. You got it? Because I'm not going home to heaven for a long, long time. But by the time I do, I'll know that I have made an incredible impact because of the life that I live. No doubt about it. But I know y'all laughing, man. I don't care. I ain't mad about it. You know, I put a picture up of a lady uh, last week, a whole bunch of pictures of her. She's so, she's so fine. Lord Jesus, she's so fine. And I told her, I sit on the, on the, on the caption, you look fly, you look good on my mama, on my hood. Everybody under, pastor, who helped you with this? Pastor, did lady tell you to say this? I ain't studying y'all. Let's stand up. We got to go home. We got to go home. Now, don't grab your bags yet. Don't grab your bags yet, but let's stand up. So real quick, when it comes to receiving this language, pastor, I was told the only way you receive it is someone lays hands. We do see that in scripture, but we also see in scripture where there was no hands laid and they received. So this is what you do. You don't have to wait till pastor preaches it in the first quarter of the year. You say, man, I want that language. This is what you hear the steps. Number one, remove all barriers. Remove everything that anybody told you about Holy Spirit not being for today and that ooky mooky boo 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 stuff. Just, just get rid of all that, all those thoughts. Because I've given you enough scripture for you to understand the word. And get in a quiet place and just worship God. You got it. You know, you, of course, you have to be saved. You got it. And so if you're not saved, 
you need to get saved first. You know, even if you're saved, repent of any sins and just get in a quiet place and worship God. And then request for the gift of the Holy Spirit. And then just as soon as you ask for that gift, receive them by faith and continue to worship God. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. We're waiting on God to do something when he's waiting on you to do something because the Bible says on the day of Pentecost, they spake. You've got to open your mouth. And as you begin to open your mouth, it might feel a little funny, but you'll begin to just, you'll be just begin to pray the perfect will of God for your life. So remove all barriers, request the gift of the Holy Spirit, receive him by faith, and relate to him daily. I pray in the Spirit every single day. Now, even though I don't pray in the Spirit long when I'm with you all, oh, man, I, man, I might be driving somewhere. I might pray in the Spirit 10 minutes. Why? Because I, I don't know sometimes what to pray. You got it? But the Holy Spirit does. Last week, if you remember, I, I, I can't do it now, but last week, if you remember, on my prayer regiment, I gave you what I prayed for my wife and I, and I gave you uh, what I prayed over Jay and Hannah. It was very detailed. You got it? Because, um, because my thing is, that's how you do it, right? Well, when I pray for you, you got to, I pray, I, I pray for you, I pray for your family, I pray for protection over your life, I pray for increase over your life, I pray for your marriages, you got it? And then there, there, there is those that are single that I, that I pray that they find godly contentment until they become married. And then those, there, there are those that are single uh, who either were married, never going to get married again, or never got married, and that's actually not what they're supposed to do. They're, I don't have time to get into it, but they're really married to the Lord, you got it? And that's a whole nother ministry, which is actually an amazing thing, okay? But, but so I'm praying all these these things over your life, but then after I get done, I begin to pray in the Spirit. Why? Because I don't know everything you're going through, but He does. And it's not my job to know all what you're going through, but it's my job to get in agreement and in faith with you that you are overcoming everything that you're going through. So heads about and eyes are closed. Father, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus for every person under the sound of my voice. You know them name by name and situation by situation, so it's with great confidence. I know you are meeting them at the point of their need. And Father, there are some in this room that they need that inner healing. And I believe right now that supernaturally the Lord is beginning to, to, to start your healing process. Oh, you are healed. I'm not backing up, but that's the way he told me to say it. So he says, now I'm starting their healing process. There may be some natural things that have to happen along with the spiritual things to bring them together, but I'm here to tell you that you are healed. I curse depression at the authority of the name of Jesus. I curse anxiety. I curse oppression. I curse everything that's not like God that has tried to attack you, attack you in your mind, that's tried to attack you in your emotions, that's tried to make you feel like you were less than. The devil tried to make you feel, he, he'll tell you stuff like you're just dumb or you're just stupid. I curse every thought that's come against your mind in the name of Jesus. And I declare that you are who God says you are. I declare that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. I declare that you are the apple of his eye and that you are the object of his affection. And I declare his favor surrounding you as a shield. I declare in the name of Jesus that every word from the enemy has been halted and we send it back to the sender in the name of Jesus. And I declare the peace of God. That's what passes all understanding. Right now is guarding your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. I declare as of tonight, you're going to sleep better than you've ever slept before. But not just tonight. Tonight and the next night and the next night after that. I declare that God is healing your broken heart. I declare he's healing your broken heart. And I just need you to do, I just need you to say two words and we're going to get out of here. I just need you to say, I receive. Father, we thank you for it. We give you praise for it. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Can you give the Lord a big hand praise? Are you glad you came to church today? Amen. Listen, I, I love you so much. Remain standing. Uh, lady, lady is going to come. I got sunshine on a cloudy day. And when it's... Well, I can say it. I, you, you want me to sing it? Oh, no, no. You're good. I got the month of May. Come here, girl. All right. How long have we been married? 25 years. 25 years. 25 years. Man. Would you do it again? Would I, would I do what? Marry you again? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I didn't know what you're talking about. Yeah, would I marry you again? again? I'm talking about. Yeah, would I marry you again? Yes. Over and over and over. Okay. You ready? Girl, I ain't got a ring on me, but I. <laughs> <laughs> All right.
Stay on your feet. <laughs> yes. Okay. So I'm going to go. You're going to go. I love you. I love you. I'm going to miss you a whole lot. I know. You're going to call gonna me We're going to talk about, we, the, the, the drive is nine hours. We're going to talk about seven. Yes. Isn't that right? Well, I'm going to take a nap. So. You're going to take, okay. So <laughs> so we'll talk on the way to the, to the house. Yes. And then you're going to take a nap and yeah. then you call me when you get done. About five. Lay it on me, girl. <laughs> Lay it on me. I love y'all. Yes. y'all doing? Y'all look good. All right, let's go home. It's 1230. It's time to eat, right? Okay, a few reminding announcements. Um, this Wednesday, FYI, are y'all ready to party? All right, FYI for our group that is, um, what is it, 60 and over or 50 and over? Six, no, I'm playing. No, I'm playing. 60 and over, FYI, we're meeting this Wednesday night at 630. If you have not signed up yet, please do so today. We are so excited about our time together with you guys on Wednesday. Also, if you took an angel tree tag, you do not have your gifts for the kids, please bring those back today as we want to go ahead and start giving those to the families who are who are in need for Christmas. So um, next week, one service, 10 a.m., okay? So make sure you guys come. Don't stay home if you're in town. It's going to be a great day because pastors giving away giving away gifts next week. So come early, get your tickets, so that way you can um, participate in that. And I think that's it. So pastor had an awesome lesson, right? We're going to go out, and we're going to make sure we put that word to work. Amen? Also, in the foyer, before you leave, we have some holiday treats for you. This week, we have some Terry's um, popcorn. Um, he's a popcorn maker out of Jacksonville. Homemade popcorn is very, very good. Don't leave without it. We also have some cupcakes. We have coffee. We have lemonade. It's for you, so please partake of that before you leave today. So let us pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your presence that is here. We thank you, Father God, as we leave this place, your presence is always with us. Protect us, keep providing for us as you always do, and we'll forever give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I'll see you guys next week at 10 a.m.